Welcome, everybody, to another episode of On Top and Hot, the interviews. I'm John Zadar. Today, we are going to be focusing in on Impact Fusion International, ticker IFUS. They are in the business of marketing innovative proprietary products worldwide in the health and wellness sector for both people and animals for the support of digestive health. And to bring us the latest updates for the company, we're joined by the CEO of IFIS, our friend, Mark Walter. Good to see you, Mark. How you doing? It's been like six months since we've talked. I'll tell you what, I hope both of, both of us look the same. So. <laughs> Actually, we do. I got long hair and you got no hair. So That's correct. That's correct. And I don't polish it. <laughs> we're looking good. We cover the spectrum. So we've had a lot of things happen in the last six months. And I'll be honest, I cover so many stocks. I haven't been able to stick with everything you've been doing. So this is going to be an interesting show for me as well. First thing I want to do, Mark, is I want to start at the very beginning. All of your products are sourced from the same material, bag gas, which is actually a waste byproduct from the sugar industry. And this stuff is piling up all over the world and is a serious ecological concern as well. Can you tell us more about bag gas and how you're putting it to use? Sure. The number one ingredient in our product that runs through everything we make, including the human product and the animal product, is Nutramastic. It, uh, it's like nothing else that is made in the world. And uh, we've, uh, as it relates to bag gas, bag gas is a, is a lignin. And for, for anybody that doesn't, doesn't know what a lignin is, L-I-G-N-I-N, is uh, the stiff part of a plant. And why is that important? Because it's got a ton of energy in, in that stiff part of the plant. For instance, if you take um, uh, carbohydrates mm -hmm. and we put it on an energy scale, it is, it's a one. If you go to semi-cellulose, it's, uh, it's a 100 on the energy scale. If you, if you use uh, lignin, if you can break it down, which we can, uh, you're talking about a million uh, of energy energy uh, points. Wow. And, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And nobody can break down lignin. It's just there. That's why you find it in Louisiana in all the sugar mills. Because bamboo, after it's crushed, or sugar cane after it's crushed, it's a form of bamboo. It's got lignin uh, everywhere. And, it's, and again, how do you break it down and how do you make it edible? And that's one thing people have been trying to do for years. Uh, one of the guys that's kind of heading up the project for us with our science team is uh, a guy that has been working 45 years on how do you break down lignin. And is that Mr. He, Badley? Yes, it is. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And yeah, uh, he said, uh, what you do is the holy grail for the dairy and beef industry. Yeah. And, and we're, we're the big disruptor. Where, you know, that's the, the biggest thing right now is we're walking in and talking to everybody about the fact that why are you doing it that way? And anytime I've looked at things in, in history, and I've always been a follow of, follower of history, I look at um, how are you doing it now? Why are you doing it that way? And coming up with, uh, coming up with ways, and I've done this in the past with, with many patents that I've worked with, is that... Uh, you come up with a different way to do it. So things don't change as, it, as we've seen. It doesn't change until there's disaster. And when disaster happens, then people right. change. Right. So we're, we're looking at uh, uh, something in, in the uh, cattle industry and in the industry as such that uh, they're not making change because they're not desperate enough. Well, everybody's pretty desperate now. And the des desperation comes from the fact that um, there's, a, there's a definite reduction in the amount of grain that's available. And, you know, when you talk about grain, you're talking about Brazil has the most, um, the most uh, soy. Okay. And, and you've got China that's, that has, that's hoarding soy, that's hoarding everything. Right. And you've got India that's hoarding they're not shipping any uh, rice or rice hull. Um, mm. And then you've got Ukraine, which I don't see many farmers there, but do you know they produce 40% of the grain in the world? I I heard it was a lot because when the war started, they, they said our supply was going to be diminished, but I didn't know it was that high. Oh, yeah. And you don't see 
Uh, well, when, when the uh, agricultural department here in the United States, I just read an article that they they actually planted six million less um, acres of corn. And, and how much is corn used for animal feed? How much is it used for fuel? So now we're getting into what what can I use now? So you're, if your options are kill your herd, uh, or they say, uh, uh, "Well, kill your herd," then then to me that's not an option. No. The uh, you know you're 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 reducing the amount of cattle that are available. You're you're reducing the amount of food in the industry, and so. If we can come up, and we have come up with a, a uh, an alternative by breaking down lignin, coming up with the, the scale that I just gave you of how many calories are available in lignin, if you can break it down, that's right. huge. That's absolutely huge. It's the pictures that you're showing right now, that could be, and it, that, that happens to be chopped hay, which takes a, it takes an operation to chop the hay. Sure. Uh, for the for the uh, ranch, that could be us, and so what we're trying, what we're being the big uh, interrupter here, uh, we're trying to change the ration management of of feed. So we can go into um, like at our test ranch. Um, Is we that go deer run? Deer, deer run ranch, right? Oh, Cattle flock to troughs at Deer Run Ranch in Jefferson, Texas to eat a waste product that farmers have said for centuries they won't eat, bagasse, a sugarcane byproduct. If you've ever heard anybody talk about bagasse, they say cows won't eat it. Until you use our technology, they will not eat it. The cows will walk past it and they will starve to death before they eat it. The Schmitz started Impact Fusion International. Now their company is partnering with Southern University Baton Rouge and the USDA to study their feed and why their blend has cows cleaning their troughs, gaining weight, and emitting little odor. Lignin, which is a fiber that's thought to be indigestible, and apparently what's happening is the, this secret sauce they call it is making the, the lignin pull apart from other parts of the fiber, making this fiber digestible, which it's never really been to before. Manure has been conglomerating in one area for weeks to study odor and the absence of flies. You're looking about four to six weeks and that's when you really start noticing your smell starts dropping off, your flies start coming off, and then you'll start seeing these big milk bags like on this cow here. 60% of sugarcane in the U.S. is grown in Louisiana, leaving behind mountains of bagasse. The Schmitz are turning this waste product into a sustainable food source. With a drought like we had last year, the first and foremost thing we like to look at is a replacement for hay. We have about 5 million tons of leftover sugarcane bagasse currently, and we really don't know what to do with it. Those mountains are getting bigger and bigger every year until we can find some useful product to, to make the bagasse into. Here we're taking a product that is a waste that would be filling landfills and having problems getting rid of, and we are getting rid of it in a very efficient manner. By not only getting rid of it, we're turning it into meat. We're turning it into food. We're turning trash into a beautiful steak or hamburger or tacos. We, uh, we have cattle that there is no smell. So when you, when you walk into a, to a cattle ranch, that's the first thing you expect to see is smell. Or, or it's smell oh, yeah. smell. Down the road, you expect smell. Yeah, and, and not down, far down the road. And now we've got no smell. And above all, we got no flies. That really blew our mind. Yeah. Because why is there no flies? Well, there's a scientific reason that if you don't have furfural, and furfural is, it comes out of the, the digested cow pie, undigested cow pie. If it has the lignin left in it, the, uh, the fly goes down and tests that cow pie. <laughs> and when it doesn't find lignin, it won't drop its larva. So if it's not dropping its larva, then what's it doing? If there's no, there's no, um, you know, when you see flies on a cow and you're standing around it, you better get the heck in your in your truck because you're going to get it in your mouth and your hair everywhere. Yeah, so I've been beautiful. to plenty of farms. I don't know how the cows put up with it. I oh, mean, right. they, their their faces are covered in in. Oh, and, it, and it passes on disease like pink eye and, and right. a lot of things. Yeah, and there's a. It's a billion, multi-billion dollar market to stop flies because of the disease. 
So again, it's it's a it's a it's an interrupter as far as the technology. Don't do it the way you're doing it now. Think about it. Think about what you're doing now and do it differently. So to go back to this press release that we came out with, the which is HCR 42, it was unanimously passed by the Senate and the House in Louisiana. Oh, I was, yes. I was, blown, I was blown away by that and uh, honored by that. And it's it's funny how the serendipitousness of the, um, you know, I, I met with about a year ago, met with uh, Doc, Doc Strain, who's head of the agriculture here in, in Louisiana. He mm -hmm. actually got up and talked about Ligden and its value. And uh, I talked to him about a year ago and he instructed me, you need to get into the legislature. You need to, you know, okay, but how do I do that? And, uh, and it's funny how serendipitously we get uh the people you meet in your life and they'll say yeah i met with mark and or i met with doc doc strain and um then all of a sudden we could he kept telling me that uh, that meeting that we should be working through universities well now we're working through southern university which is a major black college we're working with uh, Atlanta, we, uh our science guy and myself were named on a uh, um, a grant that they're putting in, and on that grant, the team in involves multiple doctorates and includes LSU's doctor and ourselves. So we're we're going after a type of grant that uh, is going to help us with one of the researches. So we plan on researching uh, not only the bag ass that we have, and they were by the way they were blown away with the fact that. Uh, this, I'll use their terms, the exothermic and endothermic. Yes. Uh, what happens to the, to the product? When we put the product in, it could be 165 degrees. And before we process it through our special machine, our technology, mm -hmm. then when it goes through the machine, it comes out to 88. What happened? There's steam coming out of the machine, but there's, but it's steam. It's not, it's not the neutromastic. The right. neutromastic is going in, but they were blown away by that. And then to, to uh, actually measure it at 88 degrees, uh, that was something they've never seen before. Um, and it, and it, that truly is what it is. So the the uh, what we do to the to the bag ass is we create degradation. Okay. And degra degradation is a depolymerizing of the uh, of the lignin. Now, why is that important? Because when you do that, now all of a sudden it becomes digestible. Right. And, and how do we know it gets digested? I, I like simple things because that's where I come from, an engineering background. And I look at simple things like, okay, if I have no smell, where did it go? Where did all that material go? It must have been, you know, you got input and you got output. So <laughs> it must have gone in and gone through the rumen the four stomachs and got presented to the small intestine and was absorbed. Otherwise, there'd be smell. What right. is smell caused from? Degradation of lignin. And so if that degradation isn't going on, you won't have that smell. Now, when we talked about the flies just a few minutes ago with uh, with furfural, if you don't have furfural, that means you don't have you have complete degradation of the lignin. So what happened to that? It got digested, right? So they are. That's why the you know Doc, uh, uh, we call him Pat. That's why Pat said it's like the Holy Grail, and it really <laughs> is. This is. Do you, ever, do you ever in your life fall into crap and come out with a suit on? That's me. That's me. That. <laughs> You then, are definitely an interesting character because you come across as a farmer, a rancher, some down-to-earth gentleman. But when you talk, you sound like a college professor. You've got all this information in there that is just so amazing to hear. <laughs> stuff I'm not aware of, and I should be. Looking at your products, reading all that scientific stuff, which I find boring, I found very interesting. The, the lignin, nobody's been able to break it down properly. You can. And that's changing things. Now, this is good not just for cows, right? You can use this for all sorts of animals. Well, and that's what some of the testing that we're doing is, is happening. We're, the first thing for us is, um, and I want everybody to listen to what I'm saying. This is how in Uh-oh, we just lost you. 
We are experiencing technical difficulties right now, folks. Bear with us. I might have to splice here. We'll see how long Omar disappeared. This is Mark Walter. Leave a message. I'll return your call. Just me trying to see what's going on. Okay, I am back. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We're good then. The thing I wanted to, uh, was getting into is I wanted everybody to hear what I was saying in that we're looking to, um, we're looking to replace feeder lots and by doing, by going to a natural grazing process with our product and with grass. Because a lot of a lot of the uh, ranchers, oh, I got plenty of grass. Well, not not after about July, at the end of July. <laughs> but um, when you're eating grass, the cow doesn't really digest it well, and it comes out like a like a hose. And um, so, what we're looking at is giving them better weight gain and letting those cows graze, and utilizing things like the grass, but making the grass more efficient. So as we talked earlier, it's what it's not just what you got going in, it's what you got coming out. So right. if what you got coming out is being digested properly, give me that. I'll take that too. And so if I can give you better weight gain with our whole process of digesting lignin and and all of that, then that's a plus. Yeah, and in the beef industry, you want a big cow. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we're looking at bringing a cow to market um to a thousand pounds for instance and doing it in 25 percent less time with 25 percent less feed wow one plus one equals two but <laughs> that kind of research um and i, and I know one, one of the questions i always get asked what's your big obstacle right now well my big obstacle right now is is a nutritionist a nutritionist wants to have a, a path that shows him the energy path uh -huh. So with that, we'll be able to do that. In fact, if anybody wants to get on my channel on link LinkedIn, I'll be putting out what they call blurps, blurp one, blurp two, and we're going to be putting the manual together. So when so when a nutritionist is looking at our product, we can give them those answers, and we can do it scientifically. So as we're doing the testing, for instance, I was on the phone with our group yesterday, uh, starting a a uh, test with a guy up in Oklahoma, which is actually one on our sales team. He's, he actually has a degree from uh, Kansas State in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, you, know, you put 100 cows in this pen, you put 100 cows in this pen. That pen, you, you, you feed them the way you've always been feeding them. Like maybe it's just grass and maybe it's just hay. Uh, but then you put them in our, our uh, pen and you feed them SGP plus and you can go 80% and uh, hay is pretty expensive and hard to get. Uh, you can also go um, uh, sometimes 100%, depending on what you're testing. But that that's the kind of separation that we're going to do in testing we're going to do. We're going to test all kinds of, um, of lignin because all kinds of lignin exists. I didn't know this until uh, the scientist told me from uh, Southern University that Lignin is the most prolific, only second, only second to uh, crustacea, um, is the second most prolific uh, energy source the, in the world. And who can unlock that? We can. We just have to prove it. So a nutritionist is going to come in, and, and keep in mind, follow the money trail. You've, you've heard that before. Right. Uh, in the money trail... Um, a nutritionist can also be the is usually the one that supplies the hay, and the and they do make up the formula, and we are working with nutritionists now very successfully, um, and and a and a bunch of things, but they're also that we call them in, in my world uh, suppliers. So if I go to a supplier and say, "Tell you what, we'll give you a, a commission on what you're selling," but I've had them tell me many times, "Well, you don't get it." I get, you want me to, to make less and sell less 
and sell your product and get a commission on it, right. the, the money trail doesn't follow. So mm -hmm. we're trying to do is be the disruptor and show that the rancher and basically show the rancher that we have a better, cheaper way to do it. We have one guy that uh, is actually a friend of mine. He was going to get out of the business and he had a hundred black Angus and, he, and on our YouTube channel, we've uh, got pictures of him. I was actually out feeding them at night with him. And uh, he was at, he said, I said, well, why do you want to get out of the business? He says, we're at about, you know, 340, 345 ahead per day. And I said, okay. And I said, uh, $3.45 to feed them a day. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And he said, that ain't grass. And, they, and I feed them really expensive hay because I got to go to Arkansas to get the hay. And, and I give them this product and that product and minerals. And minerals are really expensive. I said, well, let me, let me ask you. If, if I could mix this for you, and keep in mind that I have 72 ionic mineral, minerals and trace minerals, you can't absorb anything unless you have the right combination of minerals. Right. So now you got to, now on hay, you don't need hay, just go 80% SGP plus. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then you go, and that's $100 a ton versus you're paying. 250 to sometimes 400 a ton right uh, so then and that's all you need and uh so he did and he got down to i think it was 45 cents or 41 cents wow what a decrease yeah and his cattle grew uh gained in weight and he just he just sold his herd and um the problem that a lot of guys are having now is they're selling their herd for a really good price but what are they replacing it with? No different than when you sell a used car right now. You got a really good price for my used car. What would it cost you for the new one? Right. Too much. Too much. Yeah. And so you're finding that in their business plan, and we need to talk about business plans. Um, in their business plan, uh, they're, they're looking at, um, they're going to have to raise their, their, raise their own cattle through calves. So when you go, when I go to a to a ranch, or any, um, it could be a dairy, you got to realize they all have business plans. What are the business plans? Even in India, they have a business plan. And the, what what is the business plan? Well, you got you got mama cows, you got calves, you got steers, which are were bulls until they got their uh, their their um, they their their balls. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. It is what it is. I know, I know. <laughs> and, Until they're uh, castrated. Yeah, they get castrated, and Ouch. they're just they're just for to beef them out. And so, if I go to a guy like we were talking to yesterday, um, his goal is to bring in other people's cat cows and grow them from say four hundred pounds to twelve hundred pounds. So when somebody is doing that, the faster they can do it and the cheaper they can do it, the money works. The, right. money, trail, the money trail works. So you need to to establish with a uh, with with a, uh, a feeder feeder lot what they're doing and are they feeding in a feeder system where they have steel floors and they got canopies and they got everything else and we're doing that. But the problem you have is you got sewage problems. So if I can if I can if I can get by the feedlots and show them that the feedlots look, we can give you not only reduce your cost. Uh, one one feedlot that I that I'm dealing with is uh, has a has a sewage problem that goes to the aquifers, and the aquifers are the underground rivers, which yeah. in the United States is a terrible subject right now. Oh, wow. um, so. They uh, have sewage problems. They have uh, probably 12,000 cattle. And in that 12,000, they all get disease that they catch from each other. And they all have hoof problems. They call it hairy footwort. And hairy footwort is nothing but gout in oh. a cow. And uh, so if they were, so if we could, if we could help them Reduce that because remember one of the characteristics of mastic, which is in Nutramastic, mm -hmm. it kills bacteria, and we do have uh, foundations for that, and uh, that have shown us that it does. Um, then 
we should be able to help them there by killing the black mold and H. pylori. Right. H. pylori is in all of us. It's in your dogs, your cats, your kids, and you. And uh, so I guess my point is that with the with the business plan that, a, let's say, a dairy has, a dairy doesn't want bulls. They sell them off. They'll sell off, uh, you know, you get uh, 25 of them for 500, and you must take 25. And uh, so it is, um, they're looking for healthy mama cows. And what we're finding is that when, a, when you have cows, and we have them on our, in a, our test ranch, the uh, milk bags double in size. So why is that? Uh, that I can tell you. It's because the, there is a hormone. In fact, it was one of those old crap moments that we had at our place with our science department <laughs> that all of a sudden this white stuff started showing up. And what the heck is that? Stop stop the presses. This <laughs> was just a long time ago. And um, we found out that it was uh, white rot fungus. And white rot fungus is actually a fungus that breaks down lignin, but it also mimics the hormone that, uh, that, is, um, that causes a mama cow to lactate. So what we're finding is that the mama cow not only has more milk, but the colostrum, which is, developed, which is actually um, presented to the, to the baby or the, uh, the calf in the first 90 days, and that's where the immune system is transferred, just like in a woman, just like in a, any any animal. The, you you get the the uh, immune system from the mama. Uh, these calves are being born healthier, and the the, the way they describe it, the, the ranch hand at uh, at our ranch says they're bouncing around like babies, and uh, they're healthy. And if you don't have a healthy mama cow, those calves will come out bloated, and they never lose their bloat. Oh. So it is, um, it, it is, that's been a real. So your product is very disruptive in the cattle feed, maybe a lot of other animals. It is cutting down on bacteria, gets rid of flies, gets rid of the nasty smell. It's helping with sewage, but there's an entire other side to your product for the ecology because it's cutting down on CO2 on both ends. I mean, yeah. we're taking care of the problem from the inside out rather than the outside. I mean, most people don't know that cow farts, really do hurt our environment. They have been tearing up the ozone, so scientists say, for a very long time. And your product actually alleviates these problems, which is the segue into that new law. I want you to explain the benefits of this new Louisiana law that was passed about bad gas and how this can affect your company directly. Well, number one is that uh, there are bad gas piles that are like mountains. And in fact, if you talk to the people that live in the uh, the suburbs that are that are built around it, they all got lung problems. And it's it's not something I make up. That's that's a fact. They all got you know. Yeah, if you get rid of that, that'd be great. All of those all of those bag oh. smell. And why does it smell? Because they have bacteria growing in them. And what do we do when you when we bring it into our plant? It's when we're pressing and mixing. It smells like Starbucks. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why we're getting rid of the we're getting rid of the uh, bacteria. We're adding something into it that is uh, called carob. And carob, remember the old carob chocolate that Hershey's? Yeah. Made? Yeah. Okay, well, the biggest user of carob is Hershey's, but it's been really mis uh, misunderstood worldwide, especially by the Americans. We never we under we we look at words, but we don't I, we don't uh, go into what the word means. Right. But there's um, when John the Baptist went into the wilderness and ate locusts and honey. Well, there's no bees, there's no locusts in the desert. He ate the locust pod. What is the locust pod? It's the carob pod. It's the it tastes like chocolate. They they pull it down off the tree. It got a deep tap root. It's got plenty of minerals in it, and uh, it is phenomenal. Uh, so so what I end up doing is um, I end up uh, it's like like I said earlier, falling into mud and coming out with a suit on. Um, <laughs> I started adding it as a protein source to our in our in our mixer. We've got a really cool mixer that I found in a field and and re, redid it, and it's uh it's pretty cool. Anyways, I mix it and then I press it, 
and I press it with all of our technology that goes out with the new Dramastic, and wow, it really, really does a number on it. So that's what I was saying. It smells like Starbucks right in the morning, in the morning when we're when we're pressing. Um, then I also kept kept telling myself, you know, if I can't get a better way to transport this material, uh, we're well, going to be- hold on. Now I want you to stick to that law. Uh, I, I still don't understand the benefits of this law for your company and what they're trying to do with it. What they're trying to do is find ways to get rid of the mountains. <laughs> so, so the for instance, uh, anything bag ass, they're open to testing. Well, if you look at our at our uh, we were a research facility, we're a validation facility, and we're a commercialization facility. So I'm not only using um, our SGP Plus product for for uh, fertilizer, for mulch, and it's phenomenal what it does on mulch. It's like falling into a to, to a pile of crap and coming out with a suit on. It, um, we've got in our test facility in Raceland, we've got a garden that we put together that there are no bugs on the plants. The plants are, the fruits are growing uh, enormously where you don't grow those kind of fruits like apples and stuff like that in Louisiana. Um, and any plant that we didn't put the mulch around with SGP, it's got bugs on it. It's got bacteria on it. The ones that have it, like grapes, there's wow. no bugs. There's no bugs. There's no bugs on the. Um, on That's the, a super product. That's a whole nother disruptive sector right there. I just had a guy come down from Canada, from Calgary, and uh, he wants to ship it up there. And so, and I guess shipping would be the next the, the next step. But so wow. what they're what they're looking for in in uh, Louisiana, it is a Louisiana problem. There are basically 11 sugar mills, and we're working with the American Sugar League. In fact, they've been very good with us at pointing us in directions like the USDA in New Orleans. Okay. And we've been down there to see them. And um, so it it is, um, and we're working with uh, the Farm Bureau, like RFD TV. They'll mm -hmm. be coming to do a second video on our, on our plant. And uh, so I can, I can go on and on with that. We're getting everybody is realizing that we got something here we got yeah. something here there's it's not it's not a bunch of bull crap it's real and uh pardon the pun <laughs> pardon the pun yeah i figured you'd get that one and uh so it, it is um we're changing everything about lignin that nobody knew what to do it, it and people say why is it piling up well it costs too much to take it to a to a landfill so it just piles up now what happens there? Well, it catches fire, and uh, on our bag ass pile, which you can see in the back of our property, and keep in mind, people don't realize that we're a pretty substantial company. We've got seventy five acres, and we've got lots of building, and um, and we have a bag ass pile that you can see from a satellite. And <laughs> I can I can take old bag ass that's thirty years old, and that's some of the testing we'll be doing with uh, with this whole thing is that. Can we use that bag ass? Because I can tell you, when I go back to that bag ass pile, it is all the fibers are still there. The only what's what is there that that doesn't go away? The bacteria. What do I do when I put Nutramastic in there and run it through our technology with everything that we have? It's gone. Now, aren't these producing a lot of CO two? These and piles. It, it does produce a lot of CO two, and especially when it's run through animal feed. And so it, and I, and I, I, I guess I misspoke on that, that animals produce, like we talked earlier, a lot of CO2 gas. Yeah. And we get rid of that. So if I can give you food that turns into energy and it creates um, no CO2 gas, well, how do we know that? There's no smell. How do we, know, how do we know that? Because there are no flies. And um, what a disruptor. You know, it's like, give me a chance to show you what I can do. And, and you're so, getting that now, that that partnership with Southern University of Agriculture is going to prove more than you've already brought to the table. And we've had others that came to us, like, for instance, the press release that I just put out on that. Uh, I read that. came out yesterday. Yeah. You realize that 
the worldwide press release that we did, we had every continent in the world look at us. Every really? continent in the world. I was so impressed. I wanted to ask you, in one of your press releases, you say the company is now offering analytic reports. What is that information about? Um, the do you have any idea how many people have looked at that? Well, the analytic reports are reports that we get back from the company that does the uh, press releases. But the analytic report was what I mentioned earlier. Is if you go to uh, LinkedIn and look up Mark Walther, M A R C, mm -hmm. and um, I'll be putting out analytic reports made by our science department that is working with the whole group, the whole group meaning uh, Southern University and whatever we run into. Because our our deal with them is that we we can we can uh, publish anything that is found in the studies and so it's not it's not um so because we can publish it we what we're trying to do is come up with this sort of like this manual for the nutritionists right and for instance um i think i just po posted the first one and we call them a thread and uh and the thread it comes out uh, they're not long but they're very they're very concise. So we have a blurb one that's a couple of pages long. In fact, this one is uh, two and a half pages long. And I'll be putting those out once a week. And you could start putting a manual together on for a nutritionist on what are you finding. So when I go to a nutritionist, he says, "Well, can you show me your data?" Well, I can tell you, six years ago, eight years ago, no, I, I didn't have it. We didn't have the money to do that. Now right. we're getting now we're getting. Uh, uh, from the this this whole uh, thing we've been talking about, we're getting uh -huh. what what is equivalent to millions of dollars worth of research for nothing. I and like that. Yeah, I, like yeah, the yeah. Word, I like the word nothing. I come from a poor family, man, <laughs> and uh, you know we we had to learn the to bargain. Information is gold right now too, and if you're getting that sort of information for nothing, holy cow! That's right. So we'll be involved in. Um, in research teams that are going after grants for through or through the universities. Um, we'll be teaming up with them on grants for uh, what we were talking about with the uh, SGP ag, which is the, fer the, uh, the fertilizer. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and a whole lot of very targeted things. We've got people that have doctorates from the university that, I mean, they, they, they're so close to us now, they're coming out the fish in our pond. Oh, so, that's uh, good. That's yeah, real awesome. good. You fish and with somebody we're works, talking, you're going to make We're talking about ideas. And, and, <laughs> uh, so it, it's they're talking about um, there's a lot of revenue streams that we have that we, uh, we are able to produce. For instance, we uh, Nutramastic is like a lock saline solution that helps with artificial insemination, and that's what we're studying now, artificial insemination of the eggs into a, into a mama cow. So if you've got a mama cow that really can't take the weight of a bull, and we all know what we mean, a lot of them will get broken hips, chipped hips, and everything else, um, we think we've got a way to artificially inseminate them health in a, in a very healthy healthy way and uh, have more success with calves. Um, when we were talking to uh, overseas in India, they said, you know, you can make more money on this than anything. So there, this, this company has so many revenue streams. You know, the revenue streams of intact nutrition, intact uh, endurance. Um, it's phenomenal what this, what this brings. Yeah, we're, we're going to touch on to that here a little more in a bit. I, you brought up <laughs> India. The last time we had talked, you were doing a test run on some of the bad gas that was coming out of India, and they had to ship it over here to America so that you could process it, and you were going to ship that back to them. Can you give us some updates on how that's going? Yes, I can. Um, one of the things about uh, the um, the bad gas in in India is that it is a it is a um, a more digestible uh, lignin than. Oh, yeah. our in the states so um it's an nd40 theirs is an nd50 ours is an nd40 for what it's worth 
<clears throat> so when it came over here, and it took forever because as soon as they were starting to put it on a ship, what happened? The, you know, look what happened in the Middle East. Everything got really slowed down. So we had to wait for that. Then we had to wait for uh, it getting here. And I could process it like in one day. I mean, it's in less than two hours I can process the product. Wow, really? Yeah, it, it doesn't well, it take takes 30 days to get here, and in two hours you got your work done. It takes 90 days to get here. Oh, my but, God. Yeah, now, well, I had a little bird tell me you ran into some situations on returning this stuff to the same <clears> company. So now what we're doing is we're trying to get it shipped back. So now you got to go, you've got a whole variation of brokers that have their own thing. Well, it's a waste product. No, no it's not. It's a renewable product, which is, you know, so you got to go through that whole thing. And then I find nowadays, and I found that for many years, that since they come out with emails and uh, voicemails and all of that, uh, people hide behind them. Oh, yeah. And they don't get back to, well, we never got that. Well, okay, I got to send it again. Then wait two weeks for you to tell me how you don't have it again. And so now we're at the point where we we still need to talk about trucking. But we, um, I've got it set. I've got it. Everything's labeled. It's been labeled and ready to go for a while. I heard you found an export company <laughs> that can do this for you who is actually moving goods every week rather than every month or every 90 days. That was a find. That was a real find. Yeah. yeah. Really thank our team for doing that. We've got a pretty good team. Um, Speaking of so, a team, I hear you brought on some new help. You got yourself a vice president now. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, um, he's a worldwide nutritionist. And uh, you can see him uh, on, on his um, uh, Facebook but he is um, he's a he's a great nutritionist, not not the kind that we were talking about. Okay. But he is um, he is actually going to go over when we when I make the deal with India is go over there and run the plant. Um, so that I think is very critical because when we go to another country, it's not our laws and it's not yeah, right. You know, right. So I, do I trust anybody? Well, you know what? Um, when somebody tells me how do I how do I protect my my shareholders, and which is me and you and everybody that, that might own stock, and the thing is, when somebody says to me, "Well, you go to the you go to the um, to the U.S. consulate," well, you know what? And eh, that doesn't work. It, that more government does not work. Right. So Let's keep the government out of it as much as we can. What's always worked for me, because I've owned companies in multiple countries and with technologies, is um, when you talk about, uh, well, we want you to put up a bond. And that's usually what I use. I use bonds. And I use American bonds in American banks with American lawyers. So that's how I protect us in that. Now, it doesn't mean I don't trust the people in India. No, I trust them. They're nice no, you're people. being prudent. Every businessman yeah. needs to protect his assets and minimize risk. Yeah, I'm a lot like Reagan. Trust but verify. <laughs> no, trust but verify. So, Amen. so we're um, we we want to we'll build the plant over there, and I've actually taken our whole plant and I've mapped it out. So I've come up with new technology, faster technology, um, things that make us bigger and better. And uh, you know, when you got a plant like ours that can produce at present sales rates, can produce 136 million dollars. That's pretty cool. That's, pretty cool. <laughs> that's more than cool. That's success. That's, yeah. that's what we're looking for. And so your exactly. revenues have been increasing from last yeah. year to this year. I mean, it's not a lot of money, but it's a huge increase. You've got the ball rolling. you got a lot of customers starting to line up now since Deer Run is starting to show proof in the pudding. Yeah, and then and we're showing proof. You know, how many people get that kind of an attaboy from the state of Louisiana? I mean, a unanimous vote. Yeah, uh, not one nay uh, anywhere. I saw that. Yeah, that, that is just a, what an honor. So yeah. I look at I look at all that, and uh, I see us exploding, um, and I see us we've we've got everything under control. And again, even trucking. I'll make this quick on the trucking. So I ran into a um, where I, I I was shipping with a ninety yard dump trailer. 
But when you ship a 90 yard dump trailer, it takes a lot more energy to move that dump trailer. And I only get 11,000, 11 million pounds. Yeah, 11 million pounds. I need, <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I need to, but I need to, to max it out. And I need to be able to, to you know, a flatbed uh, nowadays, you can get 46 uh, tons of material, 46,000 pounds of material, excuse me, uh, on a flatbed. Well, I want it all. Why? Because my competition is doing that. Who's my competition? Hay, um, uh, alfalfa, and we're better than alfalfa. We're better than hay, but I got to prove it. And uh, so, by, by I came up with a bagging system. I actually there's a company that I ran into that that actually bags. They'll bag a helicopter if you want it. And uh, I got bags that are made that when it comes out of the press, it dumps right into the bag. We strap it. We close up the one end and we put it back. We transport around the plant in a pallet. But when we ship it on a truck, it's um, and I've got pictures of it, by the way, that I've been putting up it. Um, I can literally maximize uh, per pound cost of shipping material. Yeah, and that's a big part right there. If you can cut shipping down, put more on it, bring your price down. That's one of the the biggest parts of doing business is all that transportation. So you've sure. got to and, minimize that. And if somebody says, "Well, you know, it's it's uh, customer pays the freight," well, no, they don't. Any business I've ever been in, the customer does pay the freight, but it's the cost of buying from you. Right. So, you know. Right. So so the next step was, and it's, I'll be brief on this one. Um, the next step was, well, what if I ship it by container? And because uh, a container takes about 40, so we'll round it up, 43,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And if I can, but but I don't want to have to take it in, uh, in a truck and then go load it at a, norm, at a terminal and then have it shipped to wherever I'm shipping it. So I found a, several companies that can actually bring those containers to me. I can fill them 20 minutes per container. And uh, and then they take it to whatever terminal they decide to take it to. Like one I'm looking at now, they're going to come pick it up and probably take it to Houston. Well, Houston's only five hours away. Uh, so I don't have to touch it. And then it, they're actually going to ship that probably up to Calgary, Canada. So all I really have to do at that point is to make sure that I've got the proper paperwork and I've got a good team that does that. Yeah. Um, and then... So now I can ship in a container. I mean, that's fantastic. That's all the parts that makes makes us more competitive. Yes. And, um, so that's the end of the shipping story. But man, that was a big one for us. Well, I remember that. That was a big point. The last time we talked, you were really working on trying to get the shipping to increase your loads, bring it down. You were doing a lot of talking about that and it sounds like you've made some headway on it now so that's great can you, can you imagine going from 13 and a half to 15 cents a pound down to five cents a pound that no no yeah. i don't know where how you, you got it so you get, that's amazing yeah where do you get that cost saving so thank you lord right so let's talk about those other items that you got i want to bring up that intact and your endurance these are very interesting products. Um, let me see. I know I got pictures here for you. There we go. So tell us about Intact Digest. This isn't for animals only. It's for people, right? Yeah, Intact Digest was the very first product that we had and uh, years ago. And it hasn't changed because it's still as good as it ever was. <laughs> and uh, what it does, it, it helps you with yeah, – pe people got to realize this goes for animals and humans that – Every involuntary muscle in your body, which includes your heart, your lungs, your all of your intestines, your colon, and and all of that, all run on uh, ionic minerals, and they ripple. And that's the way God made them. They ripple, and they also, um, when when that happens, instead of having a push pull in your digestive system, and we all get constipated and everything else, so we don't digest food properly. Uh, this helps you eliminate that. And at the same time, a lot, if, you, if you get a chance, look up uh, a syndrome called leaky gut syndrome. And not only do I get uh, veterinarians ask me about that, uh, but humans get it. And it's where you're, the lining of your 
uh, intestine because you're not processing protein properly. We're all eating too much protein right now. Um, that it ends up getting mucus along, along the lining and then H. pylori, which is like the black mold corkscrew, and it eats through the, uh, the lining of the intestine. And then all of a sudden you're allergic to strawberries. Well, you're never allergic to strawberries when you're a kid, but what you're really allergic to is the strawberries are coming through your intestine too big. And so your, your T cells, which are like spaceships, and they come in and they say, whoa, wait a minute, this, this don't belong in here. So it comes in and it does a dive on it and figures out how to kill it. And then it sends a hormone out to the rest of your body and says, if you want to know how to kill this, this is how you kill it. So all of a sudden you're allergic to strawberries. You're allergic to blueberries. You're allergic to whatever came through right. in your intestines. So with uh, Intact Digest, we help the lining of the of the intestine, the lining of the stomach. Uh, one of the things you'll find is w when you take it, if you've got acid reflux, which most people that have, that are athletes or humans have acid reflux, it'll take it away in a matter of about 10 minutes. Oh man, I've had acid reflux for years. Wake up in the mi middle of the night thinking there's a burning coal right there in your chest and ain't nothing yep. rid of it. And this takes and it converts ammonia uh, or lactic acid into something different that is digestible, and um, and it's an incredible product. Any when I go when the intact endurance the red bottle, that is uh, actually something that when I talk to athletes, I'll say, "Do you have acid reflux?" Oh man, I got it so bad I can puke. Okay, well I'll tell you what, take this and just put it in whatever you've got. I put I, frankly I put, I take it every day and I put it in orange juice. And uh, and it tastes by itself. It tastes like it will curl your toes. But when you put it in, when you put it in something, you put it in something. Even even coffee, if it, it tastes really, you can't you can't uh, taste it. But uh, yeah. one thing one thing that we all do that commercials are telling us: eat more protein. You need protein. Drink this protein. No, we got way too much protein. You know, you're um, in fact the uh, the guy that we were talking about earlier that's new on our staff and. Uh, Trey Schmidt, um, he was talking to our scientist, and the scientist was taking 140 milligrams of protein a day. He said, man, you got way taking way too much. How much should I take? Oh, about 20 to 40 milligrams? Yes. So cut it way down. He cut it way down, and he's, he is actually more physically fit today, muscular-wise, than he was when he was taking the 120 to 140 milligrams of protein. I guess it comes down to too much of any good thing is not good anymore. That's correct. So, so are we experiencing that with with uh, dogs and with uh, uh, cattle and all that? Yeah, that, it's all the same problem. It uh, and, and food isn't food anymore. You know, we've always had this the uh, saying that uh, it's not what you eat is what you absorb. Until my scientist came back and says, you know, that's not true. I said, what do you mean? He says, it is what you eat, and it is what you absorb, and you got to have the both together. So I started doing a lot of studying on things like uh, high fructose corn syrup. Well, high fructose corn syrup has got way too much fruit, fructose in it. What else do you use fru fructose for? Uh, it's sperm, and uh, and it's also used in your brain a little bit, but but your liver has to take it and balance it and then allows it to be absorbed. So if you don't have the minerals that can balance that out and make it absorb, then it just sits in a fat cell. It sits in your lymph nodes. Uh, I remember when I started, uh, I was a young engineer, and I was talking to another guy, and I said, you know, every, when there's NutraSweet, I, I, I drink it and I get sore armpits. And he says, what do you mean? I says, I don't know. He says, when I get it, I can't point out where the bruise is, but it feels bruised. And he looks at me and he points his finger at me. He says, "That's when I got two. So I quit. I quit, I started monitoring my input of that, and then did, and then not drinking it and seeing what happens. And that's what was going on. My body didn't know how to process it because it didn't recognize it. So now, in case you didn't notice, folks, I was over at the actual website for the company. You can buy the products there. They're about forty five, forty six dollars, and you get sixty four servings." out of each bottle, which is more than two months worth. And if you're a married couple, that, that'll give you a month's worth for each of you. Did I get it that does. right, Mark? 
Oh yeah, yeah, you're right on the money. Right on the money. No pun intended. But it, uh, <laughs> it is um, for yeah. me. It's it, it's the core of where we started from, and I've got lots of inventory, and I can ship within 24 hours of getting the order, and um, it it really is. Uh, it really works. And uh, yeah, we, holistic holistic approach to getting healthy because we don't. Processed foods are killing us, and that's what most of us eat 90% of the time. And that's those right. you've got processed minerals and everything else that have been leached of everything they're supposed to, and then they put a whole bunch of crap in there that we don't yeah. need that is building up in us. And when you get to my age, there's so much sludge in there, you've got to get it out, or else you're just wasting your life away in a, a pathetic body that just isn't running the way it's supposed to well in your liver that that, mon that monitors your blood in milliseconds it needs these minerals and now on top of it you're going to be giving it uh the uh the mastic part of it which has been around for thousands of years this this formula that we that we have everybody can laugh about it but it's it is it's an ancient formula mm. from the minerals to the mastic that that uh you can read about uh, in the book of Enoch, even though it's not part of the Bible anymore, but it, it's been around a long time. The carob has been around a long time. And what I've done is taken the technology and I've supercharged it. And now we're making a product with this machine that we have that, that I built and that we could build anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's cool. I can, I can build this anywhere in the world. If you got, if you got the raw material, which is called lignin, uh, then, Hey, here we come. So, um, outstanding. Yeah. So that that's that's. The story. I was looking at your share structure. It's a really nice share structure. You've got uh, about a half a bi billion shares, but the insiders, which is very tight, own a very strong portion of them. Do you have any plans on the share structure changing anytime in the near future? Public offerings, reverse stock splits, anything as such? I want to expand the company in profits. That's uh, I don't want to I don't want to dilute the shareholder. That's not my goal. Why? Because I'm a shareholder. And, and uh, yeah, I noticed you got a lot of shares. A lot. You're the number one shareholder. Yep. Yep. And that's to keep the wolves down because that, that product is gets more um, more uh, known. We're gonna have a. I don't want anybody thinking they come after after us because they can't. They got to deal with me. And all the people that are, are buying stock in this company, I am totally honored because they're doing it because they believe in a product that I, that I created and they believe that I can make it happen. So why would I turn my back on these people? So my goal right now is to create the revenue that we need to go forward. Um, any any uh, idea, and I've had other technologies that, I, that I've owned, uh, I've got a patent that I uh, developed for Ford Motor Company years ago. Any of those, if you if you want to bring them forward, you got to come up with assets to leverage against them. So the best way to do it that I have found with technology, and I've worked with some of the the smartest men in the in the world. One of the guys that he was only second to Edison, and um, he, um, what I learned is that. I, I can bring a technology forward and not have to go through a bank. I don't have a I don't have to leverage assets to get them. It's all about the idea. And if you look at uh, stocks like uh, Tesla, um, they're overrated stocks. And I'm not saying we're overrated, but they're he's overrated. But what do they believe in? They believe in him. They well, believe that's they right. Believe, they believe in him. And, and that's one of the things I like about your company. You're the founder. And being a CEO is great, but being a founder is being a parent. This company is your baby, and every parent takes care of their baby. They want to see it grow up and be successful. So yeah. I always love a company that has a founder driving that vehicle. He's not going to drink and drive. He's not going to be reading a book or texting while he's doing it. He's paying attention. So I'm really impressed by your abilities, what, what you're doing, and there is a lot of people following you. You're right. I see it on Twitter. Your disruptive technology has got a lot of people excited, and we're waiting for this to explode. Well, and and I appreciate that very much. And you know, I always ask a guy when I because I help sometimes I'll help companies over the years to um, to move forward or get by some of the obstacles that they're running into. I always ask him. I said, 
if the toilet needs cleaning, do you clean it? That always tells me the, the, the amount of dedication that that person has to that company. Yeah. And, uh, so when the toilets need cleaning in our place, that's me. And uh, But when the technology needs to move forward, that's me. And All right, we are coming up on an hour here, and I don't want to overburden this, but you wanted to talk about business plans? Business plans as they relate to your customer. Uh, so as I, as I look at customers, like uh, I had a guy come down from uh, Calgary, and the first thing I asked him, I, I said, before you get here, I want you to think about this. What's your business plan? And, and then I'll, I'll talk to you about how we can fit into that. Because if we don't fit into your business plan, I, I have a, a thing about that and that I won't, I won't be involved with you. It has to be a business plan that I believe in that I can help you. Right. So we started looking at um, things like we have a product that I developed that uh, is, an, is, a, is like oil dry. Only we can take. All right. We can take that product and you and it sucks up oil and turns it back to mud in 90 days. And yeah, we discussed that in the last show. Folks, we did do an interview about six months ago with Mark, and we covered a lot of this information there, which we're not going to get into here. But, yes, it is another great aspect of your product, being able to pull that oil off the water, as you said, turn to sludge. And if I remember, it falls to the bottom. It yep. gets out of view and goes to the bottom. It sludges out down there into regular mud. Well, then we took them to our garden. And um, showed them all the, the stuff that we had talked about earlier in the interview. And then we let them taste the fruit. And then we realized, they, they told us, well, we just bought a strawberry farm. We're growing strawberries. I said, well, you want to double your production? You want to have it with, you want to have it with less bugs? So that they're going to bring in product for that. But he also it was interested in the fact that, uh, that he had some... Uh, uh, some people around that had ranches, uh, even though he was in the, the lumber industry, uh, but they have uh, ranches where they could use our product. And after they understood what it did um, more, it, um, so the business plan is really a key. Not to, not, I didn't want to take I it. See that. I mean, you want to be an integral part of their business. You want to be partners with them. So if I go to a dairy, that's what I tell, what's your business plan? If I go to like, like India, um, there's 350 million cows in India. The people were the yeah, people. Were, many people as we have it in America. Oh man, it, it's huge. But their dairies are not the bulk of it because they they can't kill cows. That's against their religion. Right. So the sacred cow. So, um, but they do sell a lot of cows to other people, other countries, and they can do whatever they want with the cow. So. So now I took a business plan that I thought was going to be just 65 sugar mills and coming up with uh, a dairy that they have that uh, is 550,000 dairy cows. And then all of a sudden when we found out that it was more than that, 350 million cows, and they want to export cows to other countries, they want to export dairy to other countries. So all of a sudden, the business plan starts getting big. So if you don't ask the question, what's your business plan, Mr. Customer, you sold yourself short. Right. Absolutely. The more you know, the more you grow, period. That's right. So I've got, uh, I add the team as we go, and I find that most people, like one guy says, well, why don't you get somebody else that can come in there and and uh, and teach them the product? And so I, so I have people that, that I do that with, but I said, here's the key. Uh, if I get a qualified guy to come in, uh, the second question is, will you do this for nothing? Because that's what I do. <laughs> I don't make money on the company. I, I'm, I'm growing the stock, and I'm growing the company, and that's what I want to do. Um, am I going to do this for a long time? Yeah, I think I am because I'm healthy, and I, I want to do this, and it's exciting. You're touching on so many different areas from cattle feed to mulch for the ground, for fruits, for vegetables, uh, cleaning up the ecology, getting rid of CO2, flies, bacteria. I mean, this is a very long list with one technology, one basic product that the world needs and nobody else seems to have. I think you've got something hot here. I think this is going to be a very big deal because... You don't have any competition, and we have a serious need for it. And it affects everything, our food, 
our dairy, our farmers, you know, our, our pastures, how much land we have, mm -hmm. the diseases, the flies. It, it's impressive when someone stops to think all that your company is accomplishing right now. This is a great time to look at your company before everybody else sees. Because once farmers like Deer Run start talking about what you're doing and other farmers hear about how much money they're saving and how much money they're making on their fat cows and healthy babies, this is going to take off like lightning. Well, and if you look at the last uh, shareholder letter that I wrote, I try to keep it up to, to let everybody know what's going on. But we've got uh, our ranchers, uh, the guy we talked about, Trey Schmidt, going out and he's got a presentation to uh, a group of ranchers that are by his ranch. And uh, they one of the products that they produce is Wagyu, American Wagyu steaks. And that is your top prime steak. Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. And, and Wagyu stands for Japanese cow. And uh, so, and it, yeah, it's a big, big thought. So he, uh, they're going to put that on. But the, the real... The real key is um, for him is to let people know, and they've already been out to see our place, that there is no smell. They were floored by, by no smell, floored by no flies, floored by the milk bags and the health of the calves. Um, what more is there? Um, and then to have, uh, and one other thing we found in the, uh, the mulch that we put around the trees, it uh, we found that it, it was loaded with uh uh, tannins and tannins keep the bugs away so it's like falling into crap and coming out with a suit on you know it just uh it's that, that might make a good a good logo you know instead of it's not what you eat it's what you absorb fall into crap come out wearing a suit it's it's all good <laughs> that's right i agree you got anything else you would like to add before we shut this down something i may have forgot or missed um the biggest thing is that we are the interrupter. So, and if people realize that, just pass the word. I mean, for, for us, the last press release, like I told you, that we went worldwide. We went every continent in the world. That's every amazing. Continent. That that A little company in America has gone worldwide before she is even off the OTC. Come on, folks. People are paying attention to this company, which means this company could launch any time. Well, and thanks to um, voices like yourself that allow us to tell people about what we're doing. And um, and it, it uh, I've got people that are ordering uh, the uh, mulch, and I'm, I'm working out my system for getting, getting it out to you. And, uh, but it is, uh, that's that press release that went out uh, for the state of Louisiana. I'm, I'm very, very honored, so. Yeah, I, I think you should be. I think it's it's great, you know, 50 states out there. And this is the state, obviously, that needed the law. You needed it. And now it's been done at a perfect time for your company. As you're growing, they are now looking for solutions. You've got the solutions. Man, they brought the glove. You got the hand for it. It's a perfect fit. I'm really looking forward to seeing where you go. And we're getting over to India. That is just explosive. These are two huge areas that need your technology just to get rid of the bad gas, for God's sake. You know, the benefits are great, but we got problems we're solving as well. So I'm very excited for your company. Folks, we've covered a lot of information here. There's a lot of information in the other interview we did. There's a lot of information on his linked site. I have been over there. He's got videos over there, including mine. Thank you, Mark. That's okay. That's okay. There is information all around about IFIS. And just do some research, general research on the problem of bag gas and see how big of a problem it is and how they've been searching for solutions. Nobody's really coming up with a good one yet, except Mark. Mark, thank you for being with us the second time. I feel honored to have you. That's a good word. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us, too. Mark, appreciate you being here as much as I do. And I'm sorry about that glipse in the sound. I don't know where it came from. Don't worry about it. We'll see you next time, folks. This is On Top and Hot with John Zadar and Mark Walters saying goodbye. Thank you.